It doesn't really matter if you are a content creator, a designer or just a photographer. At some point you'll need an image manipulation program. And while there are many different solutions out there that all have their advantages and disadvantages, most of you probably want a good all-rounder software. But Photoshop, the leading solution in image manipulation, is very expensive and depending on the operating system you use, might not even run at all. But fear not. There is another. Introducing the free and open source GNU Image Manipulation Program or short GIMP. And while it's true that GIMP might not be a suitable alternative for professionals that need special plugins, features or are simply bound to use it by a company they're working for, GIMP is actually far more powerful than most really know. So let's get into it right after you hit that like button. For more content like this, you should also consider subscribing. Okay, so I've been using GIMP for over a decade now and it never disappointed. Many claim that GIMP is not a real alternative to Photoshop because it lacks certain features. And it's true, to a certain extent. See, Photoshop is targeted at designers and is deeply integrated into this whole Adobe ecosystem. On top of that, it has a ton of features that are just not available elsewhere. It's not on top of the market for nothing after all. But the thing is that most of you don't even need a fraction of those features or any of them at all. And that's where we can use GIMP. It costs nothing, still has a ton of features and templates and is available for almost all platforms. So let's try it out. When you first open it up, the amount of information might overwhelm you at first, so let's start off with explaining the interface. On the left side we have our toolbox, which contains almost everything we need for selecting, transforming, drawing or cutting out images and objects. If we select a tool here, then we see its settings underneath. These options define for example how thick your pen is, but more on this later. This big currently empty space in the middle is our canvas, which we will use later to edit our image. On the top right we have a few menus containing templates, textures, available fonts for text and a file history for quickly accessing past resources. Underneath we find our layers which we can use to control which images or objects overlap others. And for the start that's all you gotta know. I personally don't really like the default interface of GIMP and prefer colorful icons which we can simply select in the preferences. Another thing that I like to do is to rearrange the toolbox to my personal liking. The order and availability of tools here is entirely up to you. So after everything is set up, we can simply start our project. Depending on if you want to edit an already existing image or create something entirely from scratch, you can either open an image via the file tab, drag and drop it directly into GIMP or simply make a new image by entering a suited resolution. You can either use templates or enter values manually. One of the most common things that you need when working with GIMP is scaling, rotating and moving images around. And there are quite some handy tools here. You can move the active layer around by clicking and holding down the mouse key. The rotate key allows you to, well, rotate it. Scaling can be done either proportionally or independent. If you are using the circle selection tool and press ctrl while holding down the left mouse key, then you can easily scale circles as well. GIMP also provides us with more easy tools to quickly mirror images, transform edges freely in order to fit objects into certain places and create 3D perceptions. In order to center or align objects, you can use guidelines, which you can create by clicking and dragging your mouse from size bars up top and on the left. Or you go to Image, Guides, New Guide by Percent and enter your desired values for horizontal or vertical lines. One of the most common use cases that Photoshop is known for is that it can cut out images. In GIMP we have several different ways to achieve this as well. Before we begin though, make sure that the current image that you want to cut out already has a transparent channel or otherwise you would end up with a background color. You can use scissor select which tries to automatically detect edges, foreground selection whereas you need to draw an approximate shape of what you want to keep and what you want to remove. You can use free select to manually select the object you want to cut out. This is best being used in combination with an eraser or you can try fuzzy select which automatically selects the closest colors in that area. Which solution is the best for you depends on the source material. 
Fuzzy Select is very good for keying out a green screen for example, but very complex images are more suited for a foreground selection or free select. While GIMP is technically not a vector drawing program, you might still want to add some lines or similar. You can either choose some presets or manually adjust your brush or pen to your liking. If you want to draw a straight line, then you can click onto your image, hold down the shift key and move your mouse to the desired end of the line. You can even continue drawing if you keep holding down shift. Another cool tool is the gradient tool. While you could just drop a solid color on your canvas, using the gradient tool can improve your images quite drastically. You can choose between a wide variety of presets and modes, which can help you to put objects more into focus. However, if you want to improve your image as well, GIMP has a ton of awesome effects to choose from. Sharpening low resolution images, adding focused or overall blur, lighting, spotlights, bloom or drop shadows, it's all here. You can choose from a huge list of presets to create textures, styles and patterns while also combining them to add something completely new. For example, we can add some nice background lighting by first selecting an object by clicking on alpha to selection, increase the size of it by a few pixels, color it white and then we want to rearrange the layers so that the new one is underneath and blur it slightly. You can even create a cool looking lightning effect if you combine this with the straight lines from before. Another trick that I use in my current thumbnails is layer modes. For example, if I import an image on top of my background and put the layer into the addition mode, then the colors from this layer get added to the ones beneath it. You can experiment with these settings and the opacity to create really awesome images. Now that's nice and all, but GIMP is not just a tool for creating thumbnails and memes, but can also improve images professionally and therefore offers a wide variety of tools that do exactly that. From adjusting brightness, contrast, saturation, as well as exposure and black level, to replacing colors and a whole lot more detailed tools for color correction, GIMP does it all. You can even apply pre-made templates that make your images pop out more or apply filters. GIMP allows you to save your whole composition as a project and supports a wide variety of different image export formats. You can either enter them manually or choose them from the list right here. By the way, you can even export it as a Photoshop image. And that's all you gotta know about GIMP if you weren't sure yet if it will fit your personal needs. However, we barely scratch the surface of its true capabilities. But for this video it's a wrap so definitely make sure that you like and also subscribe to the channel. And while you're here why not also watch the next video? Who knows, could be useful. And all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening wherever you are, I'll see you around.